Welcome to our lecture online. So in the previous video we took a look at the one-dimensional well. Now let's take a look at the three-dimensional well, something that has volume. So we're going to put a set of particles inside a volume and notice that the volume will simply be, the, of course, the product of the three sides and the energy can be expressed in terms of energy squared being equal to the sum of the energies in each direction squared because, of course, a particle will move in the x, the y, and the z direction. So if we go back to the one-dimensional well and we realize that the E sub n, the energy for each energy level, was n squared times h bar squared pi squared over 2m l squared, notice that the h bar squared pi squared over 2m, well, that will survive. But now for the n squared over l squared, we now have to add the energies or the motion in the three directions. So we have the n sub x over l sub x squared, n sub y over l sub y squared, and n sub z over l sub z squared. We need to add those together to get the total energy of the particles inside the box. Or in this case, we'll probably deal with a single particle. So notice that the n will be equal to the square root of simply the sum of the squares. And for simplicity, now let the lengths of the box be the same, so we end up with a cube. And notice we can also set n sub x equal to n sub y equal to n sub z, again for simplicity, so that n is simply equal to the square root of the three times n one of the n's in either one of the three directions. We can also then assume that L squared is equal to the volume to the two-thirds power. That's one way to express it. And so now we can go ahead and rewrite this expression for the one-dimensional well to the three-dimensional box. We still have the pi squared h bar squared over 2m, but in the numerator we'll have n squared. Notice that n squared will simply be the sum of the three, and of course the denominators will be the same, so we can add them. And of course l squared will now simply be the denominator squared. We can replace L squared in the denominator by V to the minus two-thirds, bring it to the top by this relationship, and now we need to find values for N squared. Now, notice, when we come back over here, if N sub X equals N sub Y equals N sub Z equals to one, then N one squared is simply gonna be the sum of the squares, or one plus one plus one, or three. When n sub x equals n sub y equals n sub z equals to 2 for the second energy level, then n sub 2 squared will be 2 squared plus 2 squared plus 2 squared or 12. And for n equals 3, when n sub x, n sub y, and n sub z all equal to 3, then of course n sub 3 squared will be 3 squared plus 3 squared plus 3 squared or 27. Of course, we then take the square root to find n sub 1, n sub 2, and n sub 3 expressed like this. But now we finally have the ability to describe the energy of each of a particle in a three-dimensional well by simply writing it as 3 pi squared h bar squared v to the minus 2 thirds over 2m for n e sub 1. For e sub 2 we have 12 and for e sub 3 we have 27. So you can see that the increase of energy is different for a three-dimensional well compared to a one-dimensional well. So that's shows you the difference. It's essentially that we have L squared in the denominator can be written as V to the minus two thirds, and the N squared will be three, 12, 27, and so forth. And that is how it's done.